Hey! Okay, I'm here to talk to you about January in regards to my reading. In total, I read six books this month and one play. Let me show you right now and I'll tell you when I rated them. The first book I read this year was My Greek Island Summer, which I just got on my e-reader because it was cheap and it sounded cute. It was just a bit cringe, to be honest. I wasn't that invested in the love story. I was just a bit, like, reading it to get through it. But it was okay. Just not my personal cup of the tea. And the next book I just picked up on a whim was The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. I've heard a lot of hype about this. I tapped it a bit. I'm still getting the hang of it. And I thought this book was okay. I gave it three stars. I might still continue with the series because I have the books anyway. But basically this is kind of a YA thriller. We follow Mara Dyer. She was in this massive accident with her friends and they died and she doesn't really remember what happened and throughout this she's seeing things and we don't know if it's she's like hallucinating or if it's magic but we kind of get some answers towards the end and so the ending was a bit like whoa so I may need to check out the next one. I just really wasn't a fan of Noah Shaw. I think it's just because it's like an older YA but I don't like the the bad boys but they're charming. Like, I feel like you have to tread that line very carefully because I just thought he was a bit of an ass most of the time and then he just got kind of very territorial and controlling in a weird way and then things just got very strange in this book but not in a way that I enjoyed. Anyway I read this. Then the next book I finished in January was Oathbringer part one. I have to have this one. I'm reading this for the Stormlight read along. I'm excited. So far I'm, st I'm still reading part two. Uh, so far, I think Words of Radiance is my favourite, but like this one just felt a bit slower and not as much happening. But now that I'm getting to the end of the rest of this book, crazy things are happening and I'm excited for Rhythm of War. And I believe I gave this book a four star. The next book I read after that was A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mass. This was a reread for me. And I think I liked it a lot more the second time around. The first time I got very confused just trying to keep all the new characters straight in my head and and kind of rereading it has given me a different outlook on the love interest in this series. I'm not going to say any more than that, but if you know, you know. And uh, fun fact, I was reading this book while I was house-sitting for a cousin of mine and she has a cute little puppy that like chewed up this book. And I lost it. I was so mad. And so I've kind of like taped it together the best I could, if you can see. Some pages were like ripped right down the middle. But the lucky thing is that no pages were actually ripped out completely. Like I can still read every word in this book. Even if it does look like a Frankenstein's monster. And I'll be reading Court of Wings and Ruin this month. So yes, I'm excited to continue my reread of the series. The next book I read was Beach Read by Emily Henry, and I love this book. I tabbed it a lot, especially at the end. And yeah, so this is a rom-com, but it just felt like it had a lot more depth than I was expecting, which was actually really nice. And there were so many just quotes from it that I was like, I need to tab this, I need to tab this, I want to keep reading, but like I need to not forget that. And the ending was very beautiful as well. I really like the kind of attitude this book takes to love isn't about happily ever after. It's about, you know, living one day at a time, choosing that person every day. There is a bit of angst, but we really get to see these characters support each other through some really tough times. And it's just ultimately very charming. Oh, and there's so many like hilarious moments in this. Four stars. Four stars. Then after that, I read a play this month. I read the Cherry Orchard by Anton Chekhov, which I really wanted to get done because I know it's quite the classic and I felt pretty ashamed for not having read it yet. And I, as with most plays, I think I just needed to see it on stage because the actual reading of it, it just felt like nothing happened. Character development felt very rushed and nothing actually came to fruition. But maybe it's kind of saying 
something in that. I might be making a statement. Also, I think there's a lot of historical context about like when and where it was written that I might not know. So I am, I'd look, I'd be willing to read it again, but if it came right to town, I'd check it out. But for the reading experience and what I got out of it, I gave it two stars. Sorry. And then the last book I read in January was With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. This I got from the library and I'm so glad I did. I've never, this is my first book by her that I have read and I just really enjoyed it. It was very fast and flowy. The writing was beautiful. I have so many quotes that I took on my reading app and being white, it was really great to learn more about like other cultures, especially ones that aren't as prevalent in Australia. So it was very eye-opening, it was very beautifully written and it was very heartwarming and the romance I think was perfectly paced. It wasn't done too quickly and I loved it. That was my first five star read of the year. So I'm very stingy with those so it earned it. <laughs> Let's talk about all the books I bought this month. I have a bit of a problem but it's fine. I caved and I finally bought The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang because everyone is saying it's amazing, it's gritty, it's war, it's Asian inspired, it's based off real events and apparently just destroys you. And I haven't read enough Grimdark so I'm hoping I'm really gonna like this. I want to be a sheep in this case. And I don't know when I'm going to get to this, but hopefully soon. Next I got was the ebook for The Duke and I. And I got this because I finished Bridgerton and then I found out it was a book series. And so I had to have it. And it was on sale, so no brainer. The next book I also bought was an ebook, which was The Blood of Elves, which is the second book in the Witcher series. I have the first book on my shelves, like in paper. I haven't read it yet, but I think. I'm gonna like it and I'm excited to see that world expanded from the Netflix show. So that should be really interesting. I think I'm gonna start doing this if I don't, unless I absolutely adore a series, I will buy the first book physically and then the rest digitally because there's not enough room for all my children up here. After that I got another another ebook. I got Dawn Shard by Brandon Sanderson. This is installment 3.5. Of the Stormlight Archive, so it's the novella in between Oathbringer and Rhythm of War, which I plan to pick up as soon as I finish Oathbringer because my copy of Academus and Fury was destroyed, and I already have A Quarter of Thorns and Roses in the new covers. I was like, well, why don't we just get the new covers so I can have a full set that's not destroyed? And so my plan is that OG covers will be my annotated versions. And these ones will be the ones I read all the time. So yep, yeah, Court of Thorns and Roses, I already had this one. And then I bought A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Wings and Ruin. When I first saw these covers, I was a bit like, ill. I don't like it. It doesn't fit the vibe. But the more I look at them, the more iconic it is. And I love it. And I feel like I love that these colours are so bright and they look really good together. The next thing I bought was Lower by Alexandra Bracken. This has been getting a lot of hype. I hope it's actually good. But I've read her other series, Darkest Minds, which I enjoyed back in the day. And this is based on Greek mythology. I think, from what I can tell, it's like gods become mortal for a time and there's some kind of competition, Hunger Games type thing, where mortals get to become a god. So, I'm keen. I might be a bit off on that, but... That's the vibe. I, that's all I need to know. <laughs> After that, some books came in the mail I ordered a while ago, and that includes Star Daughter, which I haven't heard many people talk about this, but like she is stunning. Look at it. Look at it. Absolutely stunning. And for whatever reason, I could not find this anywhere in bookstores where I live. Even ordering it online, I could only order it from America. Like if I wanted to order it through like one of like the Australian bookshops, like they'd have to special order it in. So I don't know what's happening if it just didn't actually print that many copies for the first run, but I'm really excited about this. So this is kind of a take on Stardust from what I can tell. It's about this girl who is part star and so she actually like travels up into the sky with her star family 
and then has to do some kind of contest to save her dad. I hope I like this as much as I think I will. And then the last one that actually came in the mail like yesterday, so technically the beginning of February, but we're just going to include it because I think it came out a bit earlier, and that is Aval So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the last book in the Curse Breakers series. The first one is A Curse So Dark and Lonely. I, I liked the first one, loved the second one, and I'm really hoping this one's going to be a good conclusion. The, it is a bit shorter than the other two, so that kind of concerns me. It always concerns me if the finale isn't long, because it makes me think they're not actually going to tie all the loose ends, or it's just going to be a bit, a bit basic. Those are the books I read and bought in January. Please let me know if you have read any of these, what your thoughts were, or if any of these are on your TBR. And I will see you next time. Bye.